Good morning students. My name is Prerna and today from your main reader first flight we are going to be studying chapter number 10. So the name of the chapter is the sermon at Banaras. Now let us first understand the title of the chapter. So as I have already told you that the title of the chapter is Sermon at Banaras. What is the meaning of the word sermon? Sermon is basically a teaching, mainly a religious teaching which is given by a sage or someone belonging to a religious community, someone who is heading a religious community. So this sermon or this teaching was given at Banaras. So who gave this sermon? It was Gautam Buddha. And what makes this all the more special? Why is this sermon so special? What is so unique about it? The uniqueness about this sermon is that this was the first teaching or this was the first lesson that Gautam Buddha gave after achieving enlightenment. And Banaras was the first place where Gautam Buddha delivered a sermon after achieving enlightenment. So let us talk more about this chapter. Now, we cannot escape from realities of life. One such reality is that each one of us is a mortal being. What do we understand by the term mortal? That we all have to leave this world. Ultimately, we and our loved ones all have to depart from this world. We all have to depart from this world. We all have to leave this world. However, one needs to overcome the grief of losing the loved one. So let us understand this chapter in detail that what is this grief we are talking about or how do we overcome this grief and what is the need to overcome this loss and is it that easy or why should we you know not lament about losing someone. Now first we are going to have a quick look or a brief look at the life of Gautam Buddha. So Gautam Buddha was not always, he was not a born sage. So Gautam Buddha, he began his life as a prince named Siddhartha Gautam. And where was he born? In the northern part of India. So imagine a king living a royal life what happened that he went to the path of enlightenment? Why did he become a sage? What was that particular incident? So when he was 12 years of age, imagine someone so young at such a young age. So at this tender age of 12, he was out for hunting. So he was a prince, obviously he was involved into hunting, visiting places. So he was out for hunting. And suddenly he saw certain scenes, he saw certain things which were, which seemed very unpleasant to him. So what were these? So he saw a sick man, someone who was not well, someone who was very aged, someone who was old and then he saw a funeral procession. So he saw that someone had passed away and his loved one were taking him and they were crying and they were weeping. They, they were uh, crying out, they, they were shouting because they, they just could not accept it that you know someone has gone away. And then he saw a monk begging for food basically. So these four sight of a sick man, of an old man, of a funeral and then of a monk, it really disturbed him. 
a young boy of 12 was taken aback by all these unpleasant scenarios. So these sights moved him so much. He became so overwhelmed with emotions. He was so much taken aback. He felt so sad after looking at these that he went out into the world to seek enlightenment concerning the sorrows he had witnessed. So now Gautam Buddha, when he saw these four sites, he wanted to understand. First of all, he was very shocked to know that, oh my God, in this world, there are so many sufferings because he was born in a royal family. So he thought everything is absolutely fine. The life is really good and happy go lucky, <laughs> you know. But when he saw all this, he wanted to understand that, oh my God, is this also a part of life? So he thought and he made a commitment to himself. He gave up his royal life. He gave up all the materialistic pleasures of the world and he went into the forest because he wanted to understand what was the true purpose of life. And if life has so many sorrows, if, if life is not just about happiness, if life is also about sorrows, then what does one do in that case? So he wandered for seven years. So for seven years he meditated, he went from places to places seeking uh, information, seeking explanation, seeking knowledge about life, what exactly life is. And then finally he sat under a people tree. You might have, you know, very commonly seen Gautam Buddha, you know, sitting under a peepal tree. And under this peepal tree, he vowed to stay until enlightenment came. So what is the meaning of the word vow? When you take a vow, it means you take a promise or you commit something maybe to yourself or to someone. So Gautam Buddha, he made a vow that I will sit under this people tree unless and until I achieve enlightenment. So he said that I'm not going to move from this people tree unless and until I understand what exactly life is. So he wanted to be into the highest state of life. So enlightened after seven days. He renamed the tree, the Bodhi tree. So the people tree under which Gautam Buddha achieved enlightenment, that tree came to be known as the Bodhi tree or the tree of wisdom. And then Gautam Buddha, he began to teach and to share his teachings and understandings about life. And at this point, he became to be known as the Buddha or the awakened or the enlightened. The Buddha preached his first sermon at the city of Banaras. So let us know what was this sermon about and why was the need to or what incident made Gautam Buddha deliver this sermon about life. So there was a lady named Kisa Gautami. She had only one son and he died. So imagine a mother having a single child and the son died. So this lady, Kisa Gautami, she was so devastated by her son's death that she could not even accept this. She could not accept the fact that her son has passed away. So she went to every house and she said, give me some medicine that I can bring my son back to life. So every house that she went, people said that this lady has lost her senses. Is this even possible? The boy is dead. This is just not possible. Why is this lady behaving in such a manner? Then after a lot of searching, Kisa Gautami met one man. 
So, she met a man who said that I cannot give you the medicine, but I can tell you name of a person who can help you. I can tell you a physician who can help you. So, Kisa Gautami, she had become so desperate that she said, tell me, please let me know who is this man, who is this physician. So, this man said that you go and visit Shakyamuni. The name of this person is Shakyamuni, the Buddha. So, when Kisa Gautami, when she rushed to Gautam Buddha, so Gautam Buddha in a very serene tone, in a very peaceful tone, he said, all right, I'll try to help you, but for that, you need to do one thing. So Kisa Gautami said, okay, tell me, what am I supposed to do? So Gautam Buddha replied, I want a handful of mustard seeds. So Kisa Gautami was like, all right, this is not such a big task. But then Gautam Buddha told her another thing. He said, you get these handful of mustard seeds, but only from that particular house where no one has ever lost a child, a husband, a parent or a friend. So, Gautam Buddha said that you go get a handful of mustard seeds, but only from that house where no one had ever died. So, Kisa Gautami said, okay, let me try this. So, she went to every house, every possible house in the village, she went. But she could not find any such house because every house she went to, there was someone who had died maybe a few years ago, a year back, few months back. So, death she, in every house had taken place. So, then she was in a state of despair. She felt completely hopeless because she could not find any such house. And then she sat down at the wayside watching the lights of the city. And suddenly she saw that these lights were flickering. So, they were, the, the lights were coming in, they were going out. So, she saw that these lights were continuously flickering and suddenly they extinguished. So, there was complete darkness all around. So, what happened? At last, the darkness of the night reigned everywhere. So, there was complete darkness. And she, she here refers to Kisa Gautami and she considered the fate of men that their lives flicker up and are extinguished again. So, she realized this thing that each one of us have to leave this world one day. The light of life finally extinguishes and then she thought to herself how selfish am I in my grief death is common to all she understood what Buddha was trying to teach her and then she became his disciple so what was the sermon given by Gautam Buddha the Buddha said Quote, the life of mortals in this world is not any means by which those that have been born can avoid dying. So, in the very first line, Gautam Buddha is saying that you cannot avoid death. Ultimately, it has to come. So, he is saying that birth and death these two are universal phenomena and this will come to all. After reaching old age, so this is how Gautam Buddha is elaborating his teaching. He says, after reaching old age, there is death. 
of such a nature are living beings. And then he gives an example. He says, as all earthen vessels made by the potter end is being broken, so is the life of mortals. So he says, just like the clay pots, they ultimately break. Similar is the life of human beings that it ultimately comes to an end. Then he goes on to say, the world is afflicted with death and decay. Therefore, the wise do not grieve, knowing the terms of the world. So he says that one who understands and one who accepts this phenomena, that there are certain things which are common to all, which is a universal phenomena, that person is truly wise because he or she will never ever grieve about it, will never ever crib about it, will never ever cry about it. Then he further says, not from weeping nor from grieving will anyone obtain peace of mind. So he says that if you keep on crying, if you keep on cribbing, if you keep on complaining, there is no way that you will achieve peace of mind. On the contrary, his pain will be the greater and his body will suffer. So he says that if you keep on cribbing, if you keep on saying, oh my God, my life has, life has so many problems. Oh my God, why does this always happens to me? You are putting yourself on the path of suffering. You are not helping yourself. And then he says, Gautam Buddha elaborates, he says, he will make himself sick and pale, yet the dead are not saved by his lamentation. He who seeks peace should draw out the arrow of lamentation and complain and grief. Draw out the arrow means that you need to give up this habit of complaining, of lamenting, of crying, of weeping unnecessarily. He who has drawn out the arrow and has become composed will obtain peace of mind. He who has overcome all sorrow will become free of sorrow and be blessed. So in a nutshell, Gautam Buddha is saying that once you start accepting that joy and sorrow are two components of life and these will exist, keep on existing. So today you are in a very joyful state, tomorrow you might be a little sad or maybe one hour later you might be a little sad about something. But this is where you need to understand that these are essentials of life and this will keep on happening. But what is it that one needs to do? One needs to understand that in my life, these things will come and go. I'm not supposed to hold on to these things because if I keep on holding to these things, ultimately my life is going to become a little messy. And then here I'll give you an example. So let's say you are aiming at 90% marks. It's good to have those aspirations. It's, it's good that you want 90% marks or more than 90% marks. But let's say you get 70% or 80% and you keep on grieving about it. You keep on thinking about it. What's going to happen? You are sitting with a suffering in your hand, but you are not taking action. You are not taking a step ahead to ensure that next time you work harder to achieve what you want to. So here I will leave you with a food for thought. If the loss can be recovered, then why lament? Why cry about it? And if the loss cannot be recovered, then why cry about it too? Think about it. So I really hope that all of you enjoyed this chapter and I would say try to implement this teaching of Gautam Buddha in your life and you will see your life changing positively. Thank you so much.